Okay, today we are going to do 24 trick identity problems and of course we'll be doing them in one take. The file is in the description for your convenience already, so make sure you download it first, try the questions before you watch the video. And this video will help you with your trick class and also a pre-calculus class where you have to verify trick identities and maybe come with some identities on your own, such as the triple angle identity for cosine. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. This is the first one, we have sine x plus cotangent x times cosine x. And if you look at the file, I put all the questions in the multiple choice format because that way you will know when you can stop or maybe you have to keep on going, all right? So let's see. Here is the first tip I want to give you. Try to work with sine cosine only. That being said, look at this cotangent x. Can we write it? Yes. Cotangent is what? Cosine x over sine x. Good. So let's go ahead and just keep the first sine x. And then we are going to add this guy becomes cosine x over sine x. And then the cosine x is still right here. And now you see the second one right here has the fraction. The denominator is sine x. The first one does not. So let's try to combine the fractions by multiplying the first one top and bottom by sine x. And you will see that they have the same denominator now. We can combine them. So the bottom is just sine x. The top is sine square x. And this right here is cosine square x. All right, now what? Now here comes the second tip. This is the extremely common identity, aka the Pythagorean identity. We have sine square x plus cosine square x. This right here is nicely equal to one. All right, so I would like to just put that down for you guys. We have one over sine x. And you might be wondering, why is this equal to one? Don't worry, I'm going to explain to you guys right here in a minute. But one over sine x is what? This is what you have to remember as well. This is cosecant x. So there are a lot of takeaways for the first one already. You have to remember cotangent x as cosine x over sine x. And then you also have to remember that try to work with sine cosine only. And then of course the Pythagorean identity. And then one over sine is cosecant x. So these kind of questions are not easy because there are just so many things going on. And of course, you also have to add the fractions and all that. But anyway, let me just take some time to show you guys why this is equal to one real quick. So note on the side. Here, let's take a look at the equation of the unit circle and that's x squared plus y squared is equal to one. Here it's our unit circle. Oh, it's actually on my shirt already. Why am I drawing this again? Anyway. All right, on the unit circle, if you put a point, then let's go ahead and just make a mark like this. This is the angle. All right, we have a point. Here's the deal. The first coordinate, which is the x coordinate, that's the cosine value. So we have cosine theta. And then the y component is the sine value. So we have sine theta. And do we see it? This is the x, this is the y. If you put that right here, and if you put that right here, we get exactly what we were talking about earlier, cosine square theta plus sine square theta is equal to one. Very nice. On the note, when I write down the identities, I will put down the angle theta, but for all the questions, I'm just using x. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay, that's the first one. Yay, and then just 23 more to go. So how are you guys doing? By the way, this starting this year, there's the AP Precalculus. So if you don't know about it, then now you know. Let me know if anybody is taking it though. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. All right, number two. Here we have secant x minus cosine x over, and on the bottom we have sine x. So what do we do? 
well, just like earlier, the usual strategy is write everything in terms of sine cosine, and in that case, it's this guy has to be changed. Secant is 1 over cosine, so this is 1 over cosine x, and then just write down the rest. Now what? Well, this is a complex fraction, meaning that we have a little fraction inside of a big one. So, what we can do is, let's multiply the top and bottom by that denominator. So let's multiply by cosine x here, like what? Here. And we will see, when we multiply this and that, we get 1. And this times that, we get cosine square x. And for the bottom, it's just that. So let's keep it. Sine x times cosine x. Okay, now what though? Well, this guy, it's kind of familiar. Remember what we were talking about earlier? When we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, this is equal to 1. We can also look at here, but anyway, <laughs> look at this. Here we have 1 minus cosine squared, so why don't we move this to the other side? And in that case, we see sine squared theta equals precisely 1 minus cosine squared theta. So let's just come back here for the top. Let's write it as sine squared x, because for the questions, we're using x. And then for the bottom, it's still sine x times cosine x. Now that's super nice, because this way we can see that this and that cancel out precisely, right, one of them, and we have sine x over cosine x, and that gives us tangent x, just like that. Right, so let me just check, everything's okay from the camera, and now let's just go ahead and move to question number three. Alright, number 3, here we have cotangent x over, and then on the bottom we have cosecant x minus sin x. So c is cx minus sin x. Alright, try this one first because let me just take a look at the camera one more time. Alright, all good. Alright, so if you take a look right here, again we can do what we did earlier change this and that in terms of sine and cosine. So, as of the top, that's what? Cosine x over sine x. Over, this is 1 over sine x. Good. And then minus sine x. And then now what? Well, let's multiply the top and bottom by the same denominator, which is just sine x. So that's pretty nice. So for the top, this and that cancel, so we just have cosine x as of the bottom. Mm, distribute, this times that is just 1, this times that is minus sine square x. Oh no, what's that? 1 minus sine square x is cosine x squared, right? Just what we talked about earlier, but this is the cosine version, right? So on the top, we get cosine x, and on the bottom, we have cosine square x and then we can cancel cancel and we're looking at 1 over cosine x that will give us just a very nice secant x and then we're done all right number four so for number four we have 1 plus 2 cosine x over on the bottom we have 2 plus secant x. Hmm. Don't worry, let's use the same strategy. And now let's change the secant x into 1 over cosine and see what happens. So the top is still 1 plus 2 cosine x, and then for the bottom, 2 plus that is 1 over cosine x. And let's go ahead and fix the complex fraction by multiplying the top and bottom by this which is just the cosine x. Now let me show you this. I am just going to multiply out the bottom for you guys real quick. That will give us 2 cosine x and then plus 1. 
okay and now I'm not going to distribute it because this and that same thing let me write it down 1 plus 2 cosine x times this cosine x the order is different but it's okay because this is just a, an addition so the order doesn't matter therefore we can just cancel this and that very nicely so the answer is just very nicely equal to cosine x and then we are done all right oh yeah i should just erase this as well so i have more space all right number five so things will get a little bit harder here and there but don't worry I will take care of you guys. We have 1 over 1 minus sine x plus 1 over 1 plus sine x. So we have two fractions. Hmm, what can we do? Let's go ahead and just put them together. But we have to find the common denominator first, right? So perhaps I will write it down like this. So let me just give myself more space, like so. All right, here is our first denominator but I need this right here as well so let's go ahead and multiply by 1 plus sine x on the bottom and also on the top same thing here this is 1 plus sine so that means we should also have that 1 minus sine so let's go ahead and multiply this here and on the top as well now for the bottom they have the same denominator and you can multiply this out right away 1 minus sine times 1 plus sine is just 1 minus sine squared. a minus b times a plus b, you get a squared minus b squared, the difference of two square formula. So multiply the bottom, we get 1 minus sine squared x. For the top, let's just write it. 1 times that is just that, 1 plus sine x. Continue, plus this is just 1 minus sine x. This and that cancel out to be zero. On the top here, we have one plus one, which is very hard, just two. On the bottom, what's this? That is, again, cosine square x. Are we done? Almost. One over cosine is secant, and that's a square version. So all in all, let's write this as two secant square x, like that. Seriously, these questions, they are not so bad if you are willing to practice them. So, number five. Now, continue. Here we have number six. We are looking at two plus cotangent square x over, and then we have cosecant square x. And then here at the end, we also have a minus one. Huh. let's do the things that we did before, right? Change everything in terms of sine cosine. So this right here, it has a square. So it's just a square version of the cotangent. So that's cosine square x over sine square x. For the bottom, cosecant is one over sine. One square is one, and then sine square, right? So just like this. And then right here, we still have that minus one. Here we have a complex fraction, let's fix it first. And to do so, we can just multiply the top and bottom by sine square x. Pretty nice. Notice though, this times that, the denominator is just equal to 1. So let's just focus on the top. This times that, we get 2 sine square x. This times that cancel, so we just have the cosine square x, and then we have the minus 1. And uh, now what? Now it may be a good idea to look at answer choices. And in fact, for to get the answer choice, if you look at cosine square x minus one, this right here is just the opposite of one minus cosine square, right? So in fact, this right here turns out to be just one minus. So it turns out to be just negative sine square x because if you reverse the order of subtraction you just negate the result just like that 
or if you prefer, you can also just do like this. Keep this two sine square x. Change the cosine squared into one minus sine square x. All right, and then we have that minus one. And now just kind of compile like terms. One minus one is zero, and then two sine squared minus sine squared is just one more left, right? So on your sine square x. So I think this might be slightly more clear. Just like that. All right, so that's number six. And now let's take a look at number seven. For number seven, it's a weird one. We only have tangent of x plus pi over four. Now we're getting into some angle sum identities. And for the tangent version, let me just remind you guys that right here. Note, if we have tangent of alpha plus beta, where we have two angles inside, this right here is nicely equal to. For the top, we have tangent of the first, which is alpha, and then we add it with tangent of the second, which is beta, and then for the bottom, it's one, and then right here, be careful. It's a minus. So let me just emphasize that this is a minus. No typo, it's a minus. Why? Because the angle sum for ten, the angle sum for cosine, this is a minus. And again, if you guys want to see this kind of proofs, I will do another video for that. But let's use it, all right? So to continue, we have tangent alpha. Here we multiply by tangent beta. So this is the angle sum identity for tangent. And now let's just use it. So this right here, the first angle is x. So we will have tangent x to start off with, and then plus tangent beta, beta is the second angle, which is pi over four. And then we'll just continue with the rest. One minus tangent x times tangent pi over four. Now, if you take a look right here, oops, this should be a plus. Now, if you take a look right here, what's tangent of pi over four? That's 45 degrees. Tangent of 45 degrees is equal to one. Why? Because of that special triangle right here. So, well, I'll show you guys that real quick. But anyway, this is tangent x plus this is just one, and then over one minus tangent x times one. So finally, we can just change the water for the top. The water of addition doesn't matter. So one plus tangent x over one minus tangent x. And in fact, later on, when you guys take calculus, when you do integrations, sometimes it may be useful to change this form to that form, all right? So you will encounter this kind of questions again once you are in your calculus class. So let me just talk about this, why this is uh, one. So again, here's a special right triangle. This is 45 degrees, which is the same as pi over four. And this is also 45 degrees. So these two sets are the same, one and one. And by the Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse is equal to square root of two. Tangent of pi over four is just opposite over adjacent. One over one is one. So make sure you also remember your special right triangles as well. Okay, so now number eight. So this right here will take a little longer time. We are going to come up with the formula or an identity for cosine of a triple angle. So cosine of three x. So number eight. Here, let's take a look at cosine of three x. And you might be wondering if this is just the same as three cosine x and done. No, it's not. It's not that easy. For sine cosine, you know the questions aren't not going to be that easy, all right? So if you take a look at the following here, for 3x, we can actually look at it as x plus 2x. So let's write that down. Cosine of x plus 2x. Why? Why do we do that? Well, now we can look at this as an angle sum, and then we can use the angle sum identity for cosine. So check this out. Here's the note. 
When we have cosine of two angles adding alpha plus beta, this right here is nicely equal to cosine of the first angle times cosine of the second angle. And then right here in the middle, it's a minus. That's what I was talking about earlier for the bottom of the angle sum for tangent, there's a minus because of this minus. Why the minus? You can check on my other video for the proof. But for the second part, we have sine alpha times sine beta. All right, that being said, we can come here and then just work that out. Starting by saying cosine of the first angle, which is cosine x times cosine of the second angle. And then in the middle, make sure you subtract. And then we have sine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. So that's what we have. And then, now what? Take a look right here. This is the double angle for cosine, and this is the double angle for sine. We can break it apart with the double angle identities. To do so, let me just write this down for you guys real quick. Cosine x stays the same, but for this right here, and if you take a look at the answer choices real quick, you will realize everything's in terms of just cosine x. There's no more sine. So for this, let's write it as 2 times cosine squared x minus 1. So this is the same as that. So that's the double angle identity for cosine. There's three versions for this guy, but we're using this one because this is the one that has no more sine. All right, keep that in mind. And then we continue, we have minus sine x, and then for sine of 2x, this right here is the same as 2 times sine x times cosine x. So remember the double angle identities as well. Now we can distribute the cosine x, so we are looking at 2 cosine to the third power x, and then minus cosine x, and then if you distribute if you multiply, because this is just a regular multiplication. I don't want to use a parenthesis, it looks like a distributive property. No, it's just this times that. So it's minus 2. And let me just put on the cosine x first. All right. And then sine x times sine x, we have sine squared x. Now, why did I do that? Well, it's just easier on our eyes that right here, this, it's the same as 1 minus cosine squared x. And then we can take this, distribute, take that, and then distribute. Right? Earlier, you, you don't distribute, it's just multiply. So it's this times that, that sine squared x, and then you put that right here. All right, so the first two terms stays the same. We have 2 cosine to the third power x minus cosine x. And then after we distribute, this is the negative, and then we have to cosine x, negative, negative becomes a uh, positive, so I will do like this, negative, negative, and then this is a 2, and then cosine, cosine squared is cosine to the third power x. And as you can see, this and that can be combined, and we will get 4 cosine to the third power, and then this and that can also be combined, and that's minus 3 cosine x. Just like that. And let me check the video real quick. All right. Oh, good. Next one, cosine 4x. Number 9. We have cosine of 4x. And you might be wondering, can we just break it down as like x times uh, cosine of x plus 3x? Uh, yes, and you can try that. Or I prefer to do it this way because I can kind of practice the double angle identity with you guys. And also, if we didn't do the previous question and if you are trying to do x plus 3x, then we'll be stuck right here, right? So. I will not do that. But rather, for this right here, let's take a look at cosine of 2 times 2x, like so. 
And now let me just remind you guys, because this right here, it might be a little bit tricky later for later on. We're looking at the double angle for cosine. Cosine of 2 theta. Just like what I told you, it has three versions. The first version, the one that we used earlier, is 2 times cosine squared theta and then minus 1. Let's come back here. So 2 times that, so this is the double angle. Let's go ahead. Angle theta is 2x. So I'll just put that here. So the first one, we have 2 cosine square of 2x. Because this is our theta. After that, minus 1. So that's what we have. Looks good, huh? And now, if you look at this right here, again we have a double angle. So we can take a look at this as 2 times, let's just look at the inside. And let me just put this down in blue. We're looking at cosine of 2 theta x. And then, after that, we have to square that and then minus 1. And why did I do that? Because for this right here, we can once again use this. Eh? Hold on. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Nothing, don't worry. Alright, so let's go ahead and just continue. This right here equals 2, and then for the inside, this is just the same as that, right? So we have 2, and this time the angle is the x, so we have just x. So that's cosine squared x, and then minus 1. So the blue part is pretty much this, except for the fact that the theta is the x, so that's what we have. Alright, so that's that, squared minus 1. And now, let's multiply this out. We have a 2 all the way at the front, and then I will just square this guy first. So 2 squared is 4, and then square this, we get cosine to the 4th power x. And then, I'm going to have minus twice this and that, so 2 times 2 is 4, and then we have cosine squared x. And lastly, we add 1 squared, which is just plus 1. And after that, we have the minus 1. So what I did was just a minus b squared. But if you would like, you can also just do the following. 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And then just write it down twice because we have the squared. So 2 cosine squared x minus 1. And then just multiply it out. And you will see this times this is 4 cosine square x, sorry, force power, right, force power. Then this times this is minus 2 cosine square x, and from here to here we have another minus 2 cosine square x. Therefore, in the middle it's minus 4 cosine square x. Lastly, this times that is plus 1. And that is what I have inside here for you guys. Alright, and then of course we have the 2, let's distribute that. We have 8 cosine to the 4th power x, and then minus 8 cosine square x, and then 2 times 1 is plus 2, and then minus 1. I know, finally, it's positive 1. So let me just write that down one more time. 8 cosine to the 4th power x, minus 8 cosine square x, plus 1. Done. Yeah, just like that. You can also try the cosine of x plus 3x, but let me tell you, this is better. Or you can also try cosine of 2x plus 2x, but um, I prefer this way. Alright, number 10. We are looking at secant of inverse sine of x. And then we are going to write this in terms of an algebraic expression involving square root. So how can we do that? Well, let's think about this a little bit. When we have inverse sine, in fact, any inverse trig function, 
they all represent an angle. So if you look at this right here, in fact, we can just start off by saying that's an angle theta. So theta equals inverse x. From here, we can apply the original sine on both sides. This means we have sine of this angle equals x. And now if you take a look at this, sine of an angle is equal to x. Let's purposely write the x as x over 1. The reason for that is because x will be representing the opposite sign. Because we're talking about sine. Sine is opposite over j sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we have opposite over hypotenuse. With this and that information, we can go ahead and draw a right triangle. And then let's put the angle theta here. So based on our labeling, x is the opposite side, which is right here, and hypotenuse, which is one right here. And we just have to figure out the adjacent side. And to do so, I'll show you guys the fast way. You open a square root first. So this is just one side. This is not hypotenuse. It's shorter than hypotenuse, right? What you do is put down hypotenuse first, which is 1, square that, minus the other side squared, and you are done. If you want to use the Pythagorean theorem, you can do that as well. You can call this b, and then you know x squared right, plus b squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, and then put that to the other side. 1 squared is the same as 1, and then so it should be an b squared is equal to 1 minus x squared, and then take the positive square root on both sides. So b is equal to square root of 1 minus x squared, just like that. But I think this right here is pretty good too. All right, so once we have the triangle, check this out. We are going to do secant of this angle secant of the angle theta. Secant is what? Hypotenuse over adjacent. So secant is just 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. Right, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. And that's what we have. And you can just leave the expression like this even though you have the square root on the bottom, but that's totally okay. Let's practice another one. That's Quite similar, but you have to do one small thing. Here we have cosine of 2 times inverse tangent of x. Similar thing, but this time we have a 2 right here. So once again, we should use the double angle identity to break it apart. This time our angle is the inverse tangent. So check this out. Double angle for cosine is the same as 2 times cosine square of the angle, which is inverse tangent. And after that, we have a minus 1. So let's go ahead and figure this out first. To do so, use that idea, right? the triangle method. So let's go ahead and start by putting down the theta. That's equal to inverse tangent of x. Right? I know you guys can do this too. Right, hopefully you guys are following along. If you have questions, just leave a comment down below and let me know. Or maybe go back to the video and watch the parts again, okay? I feel some of you guys already, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. But if you don't want to do this, if you cannot do this, then calculus, I will say, is impossible. Because calculus involves so much algebra and trick. So kind of just practice this. It's a drill, all right? So let's go ahead and continue. What do we do next? You know it. We apply the original tangent. So we get tangent theta, good. That's equal to x, yes. But don't look at x as just x, look at x as x over 1. Perfect. Because this way we can look at this, what's what? Tangent on the right triangle is opposite over adjacent. Very nice. And then let's go ahead and draw a right triangle. Right, so put the angle theta here. Opposite is x, adjacent is 1. And now this time we have to figure out hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is longer, so we add instead of subtract, okay? Square root 
this guy squared, so 1 squared, plus the other side squared. Yeah, that's the fast way. Earlier, it was a subtraction because it was a side. This time, it's the hypotenuse. It's a longer one, right? It's the longest one. So make sure you have. So now if you take a look, 2 is 2. The square, let's just put it down like this thing squared. Cosine of inverse tangent, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's cosine. So we have 1 over square root of 1 plus x squared. Yeah? After that, we have this minus 1. So that's what we have. Now we can just kind of work out the algebra. Square root and square cancel. So we just have 1 plus x squared. And then of course on the top just 1 squared, which is 1, but times the 2. And then we have to minus 1, but it's the same as just go ahead and multiply this by 1 plus x squared on the bottom and 1 plus x squared on the top. So we are really looking at minus 1 minus x squared. 2 minus 1 is 1. And then we have that minus x squared on the bottom. They have the same denominator and we are just subtracting. So you keep the denominator 1 plus x squared. Not bad. Seriously, this is not bad. Right? You can do it too. Trust me. I believe in you guys. Right? So just practice this. So you, you want to try the rest? Go ahead. But I'll, I'll continue. I'll continue. I'll continue for you guys. Right. This one is similar. Number 12, we have a tangent 2 times inverse sine x. All right, double angle for tangent. What's the double angle for tangent? Well, for this one, let me just put that down for you guys. If we have tangent of two theta, this right here equals to tangent theta over one minus tangent squared theta. Why? Because 2 theta is the same as theta plus theta, and you can use the angle addition formula for tangent, and then you can come with this. So the first move shall be, rewrite this. We are looking at 2 and then tangent. Our angle here is the inverse sine x. So let's just put that down here, inverse sine x. Continue. Yeah. Min uh, 1 minus, this is tangent squared theta, so let's put it like this. Open the parentheses and then just square that, and then inside here, we are looking at tangent of inverse sine x, like this. Now let's go ahead and do the triangle method. So I will put the angle theta to be inverse sine x. Well, we did this earlier, let's do it again. So that's how we practice. So what do we do next? Take the original sine function. So we are looking at sine theta equals x over 1. Yeah, and then this is opposite over hyp hypotenuse. It's cooler than hp. If you want to start your own company later on, maybe you can consider hyp. Anyway, all right, based on this, let's go ahead and draw a triangle. Opposite is x, hypotenuse is 1, that is the angle of theta. And to figure this out, how do we do it? This is just a side, right? It's not hypotenuse. Open a square root, the hypotenuse go first, square that, and then minus the other side, square. Huh? So now, based on this triangle, let's figure out tangent of inverse tangent, uh, tangent of inverse sine x, which is tangent of this angle. First, we have a 2 right here. Just write that down. Tangent is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over adjacent. Opposite over adjacent. So we're looking at x over square root of 1 minus x squared. Continue. Min uh, over 1 minus. 
Inside, same thing. R plus is x over hypotenuse is 1 minus x squared. But this time we have to square that. So now for this one, we have a pretty crazy complex fraction. So how can we simplify this? Same idea, multiply the top and bottom by the lowest common denominator. But this time though, not only we have square root of 1 minus x squared, but also this is going to be raised to the second power. Therefore, I'm actually going to multiply the top and bottom by square root of 1 minus x squared squared. And let me do this on purpose, you will see why. So let me just do like this. Because again, this square should also go here. I know the square root and square cancel, but this is easier to cancel the other ones. Continue. Multiply this and that. 2 is still 2. x is x. This cancel out with one of them. So we have square root of 1 minus x squared. Are we okay? Right here. Good, right? So one more left. And then for the bottom, check this out. We have 1 times that. So make sure you distribute that. But when I multiply this and 1, of course, square root and square cancel. So let me just write down 1 minus x squared. Then minus, take this times that. The denominator, it's the same as that. They both have the second power, so they cancel out precisely. So we have the minus x right here, but also don't forget the square that goes to the x. So that's what we have. So have a look a little bit. Done? All right, and finally, this and that can be combined, and then we are all done. This right here doesn't end up with a super nice expression, but... Uh, that's how things are sometimes. So that's the final answer for this right here. Uh, let me take a look at the video to see how things is going. All right, so 42 minutes, not so bad. Hopefully you guys all find this useful. And if you're also doing the questions along the way, uh, just leave a comment down below let me know and also the timestamp so i know you are still watching at this very moment next page just 12 more to go oh number 13 i like this a lot called secant square x plus secant square x a lot of students when they first look at this they will just say the answer is equal to one but it's not why do they say the answer is equal to one check this out Cosecant is the same as 1 over sine, and this is the second power, so it's 1 over sine squared x. Right here, secant is 1 over cosine, so this is 1 over cosine squared x. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. But you cannot do that right here, because this time they are both on the bottom. No. We have to combine fractions and see what's going on. So let's multiply the first one with cosine square x on the bottom and the top. And then for the second one, let's multiply the top and bottom by sine square x. And now we are adding the fractions. We keep the same denominator, which is just the sine square x times cosine square x. For the top, this plus that, yeah? So we have cosine square x plus sine square x. And now, which one can we use the identity? The top one, because there's a plus. So if you look at the top, together they are just going to be equal to 1. So we have 1. Let me just make this a slightly more artistic one. 1 over sine square x times cosine square x. And now check this out. This is just a multiplication, so if you would like, you can look at this as 1 over sine square x times 1 over cosine square x. Right? If you would like to just make it super clear, they are the same thing. When you multiply fractions, of course, 1 times 1 is 1, this and that to get is that. And the reason that we do this is because 1 over sine square gives us 
equal secant square x. 1 over cosine square, that's secant square x. And we can legitimately do this, it's because this part gives us that, this part gives us this. It's just multiplying. So we can split the fraction and still multiplication. I like this so much because, check this out, originally, what were they doing? They were just adding each other, right? Cosine square, sorry, cosecant square x plus secant square x. But at the end, they have become multiplying. Cosine secant square x times secant square x. How cool is this? <laughs> One of my favorite identity. Now, number 14. For this one, it's kind of like you know it, you know it. If you know it, you know it. If not, then you don't know it. What am I talking about? Because firstly, you might be wondering, can we just use the double angle identity to break it apart? Maybe, but the purpose of this question is not the double angle identity, but rather is the product to sum identity. Have a look here. Earlier, it was the sum to product. Like, this is just the beauty of this identity. It does not happen all the time, right? But for this one, when we multiply cosine of an angle with cosine of a second angle, we have to use the following. Note, when we have cosine of the first angle, let's say alpha, times cosine of the second angle, let's say beta, this right here equals one half times cosine of the first angle minus the second angle, so alpha minus beta, and then we add cosine you add angles together, alpha plus beta. Wow, do I remember all these identities like all the time? No, I didn't. I don't. I tried to remember this identity before I make this video, okay? So that's how. And better yet, I can make sure if I have this right or not by looking at my board. So let me just double check real quick. Cosine alpha times cosine beta it is in fact equal to this, of course. Anyway, the whole now with this identity in mind, just kind of keep in mind with the following here. This, we have the one half, parentheses, so we begin with cosine. The first angle is x, and then minus the second angle, which is 2x. And then we add cosine of the first angle, which is x, and then we add the second angle. So nice, huh? Of course, we can work this out. So this is one half. Still keep the parentheses because that's where I left the option S, right? So cosine, this and that is just minus x plus this and that is cosine of 3x. And now if you look at the answer choices, you might be wondering, hmm, did I make a typo somewhere? Did I make a typo somewhere? Because the inside here, on the answer choices, it seems to be a positive, but what did it go away, right? No, I didn't make a typo. I would just like to write this down right here again for you guys. Note, um, cosine function is even. Therefore, cosine of negative x this right here is just the same as cosine x. In another word, the negative, in fact, doesn't matter. Even function means whatever you have on the left, you have the same thing on the right, vice versa. So the graph is symmetrical about the y-axis. So in the equation form, it's this. So finally, I can write this down for you guys. One half, and I still maintain the parentheses. Cosine, just x, and then plus cosine of 3x. And we are done. All right, 10 more questions to go, I believe, if I do my math right. Oh, next one. This one, sign to the fourth power x. And if you look at the answer choices, you will see that they all have just mm, cosine to the first power, right? So 
in fact when you do calculus integrations sometimes when you have the force power if you are trying to integrate this guy then you're actually going to reduce the power so this is also the reduction formula or the reduction identity for sine power reduction formula so I'll, I'll go as to just making to the first power all right so no square one what not so let's see what we can do here is the first thing notice we know that when we have sine squared theta this is pretty nice this is just one minus cosine squared theta but we don't want to use this one this time because you see the square we still get square we don't want that by the way it looks like we have the square that's the force power so what can we do we can look at the force power as sine square x and then square so so we're okay right and perhaps i will put this down in blue to match the color in five seconds so i don't really want to use this right here because if i plug in this right here i will still end up with a force power expression i don't want that but don't worry because the truth is sine square theta we have another version to break it apart and that is one half times one minus and then we have cosine of two theta and you can derive this pretty nicely from the double angle identity for cosine i'm going to leave that to you guys for you guys to try for here let's just go ahead and put this right here and then work that out so we have parentheses one half times one minus cosine of two theta sorry two x for the questions parentheses parentheses square the blue part is exactly what i wrote down for you guys right here good now let's just multiply this out one over two square which is just one over four and then we have to do this square so that will give us the first term square which is one minus twice this than that which is just two cosine of 2x lastly we add this term square which is cosine square of 2x like that and again if you would like you can just kind of write it down on the side just perhaps i'll write it down right here for you guys real quick one minus cosine of 2x and that's being squared so that's one minus cosine of 2x you write it down twice but i will highly recommend you guys to remember the formula when you expand the binomial so which is that by the way if we take a look one times one is just one and then one times this is minus cosine of 2x but we have another one here so minus cosine of 2x together we get minus 2 cosine of 2x lastly this times that negative negative becomes positive and then this and that we have cosine squared 2x and that's what we have are we done no not yet unfortunately because this is the square right this is the square we can kind of break it down again right we can break it down again and now check this out though early i wrote down the sine square version for you guys but this is a cosine <sighs> what do we do don't worry we also have the cosine version for this as well so let me write that down for you guys right here real quick for the cosine version we have cosine square theta this is one half one plus it's just a plus instead cosine of two theta right that's a cosine version so i'm going to use this one right here but be careful notice that we have cosine squared and the angle inside is 2x right? this is the 2x here and if you look at here when we have cosine of the angle it's one half times one plus cosine of two times the angle theta so let's see i'm just going to distribute the one over four as well this times this is one over four this times this is minus one half 
and also the cosine of 2x and then this times this I'm just going to put on plus 1 over 4 but for this part I am going to use this formula putting down 2x into here so we have 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 this 2 is from the formula and then the angle theta is 2x so it's 2 times 2x like that so just be careful a little bit and now of course this part we can combine so 1 over 4 minus 1 half cosine of 2x this is 1 over 8 times that is plus 1 over 8 this times that is plus 1 over 8 and then cosine of this and that is of course 4x and now we're almost done except for we have to combine this and that fraction just do that on your own and uh, I wrote down the fraction first so we have 3 over 8 and then the rest is just the same thing minus 1 half cosine of 2x and then plus 1 over 8 cosine of 4x that being said we are done so take a look and it's also a good idea when you encounter a hard question once you see the demonstration what you do next is try to just get a sheet of paper and then redo everything try to see if you can redo everything on your own without looking at the notes without looking at the video all right just try to practice this question again all right i can wait for you just pause the video get another sheet of paper try to break down sine of sine to the fourth power x and then end up with that done okay All right, next one, it's like a hard one. It seems like it because not only we are dealing with sine to the fourth power again, but also we have to minus cosine to the fourth power of x. <sighs> we did this like the long, the, the long expression, the, all the work already. Does that mean we have to do the same thing for cosine to the fourth power and then no, in fact, we don't have to. Check this out. Force power and also force power. And then in the middle, it's a minus. I can look at this as sine square x squared and a minus cosine square x and then square. Yeah? And then what we can do next is, well, this is just going to be factoring. Difference of two squares. So we can look at this as sine square x and then minus that times this plus that so we have sine square x plus cosine square x factoring difference of two squares first minus second times first plus second and what's so good about this? This is so nice. Because especially this part, sine square x plus cosine square x is very nicely equal to 1. So in fact, we're just looking at sine square x minus cosine square x. Yeah, very nice, huh? But if you look at the answer choices, it's like, oh, again, what are we dealing with here though? Well, remember we've been using the double angle identity for cosine here and there let me just write down the all three version for you guys now when we have cosine square double angle sorry we want double angle so cosine of 2 theta the first version that we used earlier was 2 cosine square a uh, theta minus 1 and then the other version is the one with just the uh, sine square which is 1 minus 2 sine square theta you can use one or the other, it doesn't really matter. 
But here's the thing, this is pretty similar to that, right? To the third one, cosine two theta. It's the same as saying cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So in fact, this part can be derived by the angle sum formula for cosine, and you get this. And then you can use the Pythagorean identity to go from here to this, or to go from here to that. So I'll leave that to you guys. Well, this is cosine squared theta minus sine squared. Here we the sine goes first. So what do we do? Don't worry, I got you. We can look at this by factoring our negative first, and then switch the word of of subtraction. So we will put down cosine squared x first, and then minus, and then that. And let's take a second to really make sure if they are the same. Yes, because if you distribute, we have the negative cosine squared, and the negative times negative, we get the positive. So this is the usual trick that we can do. Just switch the order of subtraction, and then negate the result. And then this is exactly that, which is that. So finally, we have negative cosine of 2x. So that's number 16. Let me clean the board better for you guys. Yeah, because I noticed that this is getting very dirty. So. How's this? Is this better? Yeah. All right, so number 17. We have tangent x plus tangent y. I love tangent y because this is a tenny or something. So you can name your dog or cat like tenny. And then, yeah. But wow, how do we even start with this? Don't worry, let's just do the fundamental. Let's write tangent as sine over cosine, but this one right here will be sine x over cosine x. For this, we have sine y over cosine y. They are different, yeah? But let's combine them. For the first one, let's multiply this right here on the bottom and also on the top. For this one, let's multiply cosine x on the bottom and also on the top. Now they have the same denominator, so we can put this as cosine x times cosine y. And then for the top, we have sine x cosine y plus sine y cosine x. Hmm. What can we do right here though? If you look at the top carefully, sine x cosine y, sine y cosine x. How does that sound to you? This right here, in fact, is indeed the angle sum formula for sine. So let me remind you guys this real quick. So note, whenever we are dealing with sine and then if we have two angles adding inside, sine of alpha plus beta. This right here is precisely equal to sine of the first times cosine of the second and then plus sine of the second times cosine of the first. Therefore, this is just sine of x plus y. So come here. On the top is just sine of x plus y. And then for the bottom we have cosine x times cosine y. And this is in fact the most that we can do, so we leave it like this. Do not break this apart. If you want to break this apart, you get back this. Sine of x plus y is not the same as sine of x plus sine of y, so don't do that, it's, it's like that. Number 17. All right, number 18. 
we have 2 tangent x over 1 plus tangent square x. Hmm. Again, you might be wondering uh, if there's a type of this thing. The truth is, if this is a minus, then this is just tangent of 2x. That's the double angle identity for tangent. But the question is really asking you when there's a plus in between. So what do we do? Well, let's just do the fundamental. Let's rewrite everything in terms of sine cosine and see how things go. So on the top, we have two tangent x's sine x over cosine x. On the bottom, we have 1 plus this is sine square x over cosine square x. And what else can we do? You know, just to kind of get rid of the complex fractions. So let's multiply the bottom and the top by this cosine square x here and then cosine square here. So when we multiply all the top and this and that, one of the cosine cancel, right? This and one of them cancel. So we just have 2 sine x and then cosine x. For the bottom, distribute this times that is cosine square x. This times that cosine square cancel. So we just have plus sine square x. This is actually so nice because, have a look, the bottom right here is just nicely equal to 1. So you don't have to put a denominator anymore. As of the top, 2 sine x times cosine x. This is precisely the double angle formula for sine. So we have sine of 2x. And we are done. That's just like that. Cool, huh? Alright, number 19. So we are looking at 1 over. Here we have secant x minus 1. And for the second fraction, we have 1 over secant x plus 1. And actually, let me just kind of give myself a little bit more space. 1 over. Alright, let's combine the fractions. So for this one, we need this. Let's multiply the top and bottom by secant x plus 1, and then also here. And for this one, we need secant x minus 1, and then also secant x minus 1. All right, for the bottom, this is secant x minus 1 times secant x plus 1. If you multiply the out, you will get secant square x minus 1. Technically, secant square minus 1 square, but this is the same as one, one, 1 square is the same as 1. And then for the top, we have secant x plus 1 plus secant x minus 1. All right, let's see what we get. 1 minus 1 is just 0. So for the top, we have 2, and then we have secant x. Uh, what's this? Well, let's, let's have a look, all right? So note, this is pretty similar to the Pythagorean identity, but let's take a look at the original version, which is sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. But I want to take a look at the secant. So let's divide everybody by cosine squared. That's how we can produce secant, right? So let's divide everybody by cosine squared. Cosine squared theta here divide this by cosine square theta, and let's also divide this by cosine square theta. And we will just get tangent squared theta. This is 1, and this is secant square theta. Hey, this is almost the same as that. Don't worry. Move this to the right-hand side, and we get tangent square theta 
equals <coughs> secant square theta minus 1. So the denominator is just tangent square theta. So let's divide this by tangent square, and now here we are using x. <coughs> All right, now what do we do? Uh, I would suggest you guys just multiply. Let's just use the... Let's just write everything in terms of sine, cosine, because I think that's how I end up with the... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> that's how I end up with the choices as well. Anyway, 2, and then this is 1 over cosine x, and this is sine squared x over cosine squared x. <coughs> And then let's multiply the top and bottom by cosine square x. So for the top, well, this and that cancel, so we have 2 cosine x. And for the top, or for the bottom, this and that cancel already, we have sine square. But sine square, let's write it as sine x times sine x. Why? Because I noticed I have a cosine x on the top. I can pair this up with the bottom one right here. So this together, so I'm just going to box this and box that. No, no, I didn't box it, but like, you know what I mean. I put down, um, I put on cotangent first. So yeah, that's just box. I didn't box it. Underline this and that. So two is two. This over that is cotangent x. And lastly, we have this sine x on the bottom, so we can write it as cosecant x. That said, we are done. That's number 19. All right, just a couple more to go. Five more to go. Number 20. Let me know how you guys are doing. Number 20. We have sine x plus tangent x. Over. On the bottom we have 1 plus cosine of negative x. What's the first thing that we can do? The answer for that is because cosine is even, so the negative right here doesn't matter. So let's just rewrite the bottom as 1 plus cosine x, right? But for the tangent, let's rewrite it as sine over cosine. So here we have sine x plus, this is sine x over cosine x. Now let's just fix the common, let's just fix the mixed fraction, multiply the top and bottom by. I know I have extremely bad habit when I write cos like that. So I will try to write better cosine x. And this is C O S X. I know. Let me, let me just fix this, fix this. C O S. Alright, there we go. Okay. Now, check this out. What I'm going to do is, I am, uh, let's, I am just going to multiply out the top. In that case, I will get sine x cosine x plus this and that cancel, so it's just sine x, right? Over, I'm not going to multiply out the bottom. I will just put the cosine in the front. Cosine x and then 1 plus cosine x. Why? Because notice that this has sine and this also has sine, so we can factor the sine out. So this right here, we get sine x times this is cosine x plus 1. And then the bottom is cosine x. And then this is 1 plus cosine x. Now what can we do? Can we cancel this and that? Yes. The order of addition doesn't matter, so cosine x plus 1 is the same as 1 plus cosine x. So finally, we have sine x over cosine x, and the answer for that is just nicely equal to tangent x. Now, number 21. 
All right, one of my favorite one as well. Sine x plus cosine x squared. So again, we are going to multiply our binomial squared. And let's just use the formula. Just multiply it out. Huh? Formula says, you start with the first term, you square that. So we get sine squared x. And then we add twice the first term and the second term. So it's 2 sine x cosine x. And lastly, we add the last term squared, which is cosine squared x. This is so nice because we have two very nice identities for this question. The first one is sine squared plus cosine squared is just nicely equal to 1. And then we add here 2 sine x cosine x is just the double angle identity for sine. So we have sine of 2x. So nice. One of my favorite one. Right? Just like that. Oh, this is number 22. This is number 22. I skip one question. All right, let, let's put on number 23 here. No, 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 no. Let's put on number 21 here. Sorry, this is 22 and this is 21. 21 is cosine squared x minus sine to the fourth power x and then secant square x, right, 21. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. Mm, this, yeah, so let's, let's just rewrite this as 1 over cosine square, right? So here we go. We get cosine square x minus, this will be on the top, over this guy becomes cosine square x. That being said, let's go ahead and get a common denominator. So I need to multiply the cosine square x. Do it here as well. So we get the same denominator, which is cosine square x. For the top, this times that is cosine to the fourth power. And then minus sine to the fourth power x. So that's what we have. And now what? Well, for this right here, we can do the same thing that what we did earlier. We can factor this. And when we factor that, let me just put this down because I'm about to run out of space. We can factor this as cosine square x minus sine square x times cosine square x plus sine square x. Sorry. And then over cosine square. Cosine square x plus sine square x. Yeah? This is nicely equal to 1. So in fact, we just have this part. And then if you look at this and that, hold on, let me just see how should I. Okay, I, I, I will write down nice. I'll write this down nicely for you guys. Sorry. All right, so we have this. Let's go ahead and factor it, and we will get cosine square x minus sine square x times cosine square x plus sine square x over that, which is cosine square x. But this is just nicely equal to 1. All right, so we're just looking at that. But if you look at cosine square x over cosine square x, this is just equal to 1. And then minus this over that, right? This over that is just going to be tangent square x. And in fact, this is one of the answer choices I provided. So we are good to go. We can just say that's the answer. That done. Just like that. So take a look and let me know uh, what you think. Yeah. So again, this over that minus this over that. We just have one thing on the bottom so we can split the fraction. So 20, 21, 22. All right. Two more questions and we'll be done for this. 
and let me know if you guys would like me to do any more of that like, uh, mm, like 24 question series yeah. I am planning to do a 24 uh, find the domain questions All right, so that might be the next one or well, coming up soon All right, number 23. Here, we are going to get sine x over one minus cotangent x, and then we add cosine x over one plus tangent x. Let's change it. So here we have sine x over 1 minus this is cosine x over sine x. And then we add tangent, right? Just rewrite that. So on the top we have cosine x, and this is 1 plus tangent is sine x over cosine x. All right, let's go ahead and fix the first complex fraction by multiplying the bottom and the top by sine x. And to fix the second one, let's multiply the top and bottom by cosine x. So, we will see, unfortunately, they do not have the same denominator. By the way, I make a typo. This right here was a minus in the question. This right here is supposed to be a minus, right? So, that's the question. That's a typo. I wrote it down wrong earlier. So have a look. All right, let's proceed. On the top here, we have sine square x. As of the bottom, we have sine x times that, which is sine x. This times that is just minus the cancel, so just cosine x. And then we add this and that, which is cosine square x over this times this. This time, cosine x goes first minus this and that cancel so we have sine x <sighs> the denominator they are not exactly the same the word of subtraction does matter but it's okay let's fix it a little bit let's say to fix the second one factoring our negative and then we get this going first and then minus cosine x and now they have the same denominator but we just have to change the plus to a minus so all together we can write this as sine x minus cosine x on the bottom. As of the top, we have sine square x, and then again plus a negative, so this becomes a minus, and then we have that cosine square x. Are we done? No, unfortunately. Uh, what can we do? Well, on the top, even though we can use like a double angle alternative one now, but the better thing is, let's go ahead and just factor this as a difference of two squares, and then we can actually cancel it out. Perfect. So I will just write this down for you guys. Factoring this, we get sine x minus cosine x times sine x plus cosine x over that. And ladies and gentlemen, this and that cancel out very nicely, so that's the answer. So finally, we just have sine x plus cosine x, and we are done. Yay. Okay, number 24. This is the first time that I'm showing you guys with the half angle identity. And here we have secant square of x over 2. Secant, that's ready as a cosine, but it's 1 over. So let's take a look at 1 over, uh, let's say, cosine square of x over 2. All right? But what's the half angle identity, though? Well, for this right here, let me just again put down a note. When we have cosine of theta over 2, Uh, in fact, if you put on a square version, that's totally okay. But I think on my notes, I don't have the square version. I just put that down. And uh, I'm looking at my... Yeah, I'm only putting down the... 
I'm only putting down this right here. Yeah, I, I don't have the square version. So if you don't have the square, then that means on the right hand side, you should have the plus or minus, and you open the square root, and you have one half, one, and then plus cosine theta. So in fact, it's just the power reduction formula, but like if you look at it differently. Anyway. Oh yeah, it's just a power reduction formula. What is, anyway. So if you use this, which I provided on the cover page, so take a look, you can do the following. This is one over, the square is parentheses squared, and then cosine of x over two is just all that. We have the plus or minus square root, and uh, let's write this as one plus cosine theta over two, like so. Plus or minus, you specifically square, you still get plus. Square, square root cancel. So this is just one over one plus cosine, sorry, this should be x. Cosine x over two. So this is the complex fraction, multiply the top and bottom by two, they cancel. So final answer, we have two over one plus cosine x all right so that's that there you have it 24 verifying trick identities or maybe coming with your coming up with your own identity such as the cosine 3x and the uh, power reduction for sign to the fourth power hopefully this video helps you yeah? so if you have any questions leave a comment down below and let me know and as always that's it